Pisces Singles, welcome. Doing the uh, singles read, Meet the Soulmates for the first half of October. Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot. Um, eight card pull, always positive. A little bit different reading. So don't jump to conclusions if you see a three of swords. not about someone breaking up with you. And it's always positive because I'm simply asking Spirit in this reading to describe for Pisces the one that's right for them, their soul mate, the one that's meant to do soul work with you now. I believe that that's mostly how we grow and, and learn and evolve is through our relationship with others. It's only logical. Our friends, everything, uh, children certainly, you know, and, and relationships we have with uh, deep friends and lovers. So that's who this is uh, going to pick up for you. So it's always going to be positive and it's not going to be your next sex problem here. So I'm looking at the four pillars, break down the eight cards, two cards for emotions, two cards for the intellect, two cards for sexual love nature, and two cards for what I call lifestyle and core values. And I'm ask you to check out the Soul Family Reads up for the weekend. It's a daily collective read for whoever resonates, particularly if you resonate with this. It's a little more uh, oriented towards soul work and spiritual work and uh, manifestation, a little less about directly love and romance. Although that does come up too. It's just uh, kind of whatever's on my mind as we go along. But right now we're focusing upon uh, who is the right one for you in the name of light and love. Only so it serves your greatest good. This is what we're asking spirit to reveal. So two cards, four emotions, king of swords. Okay. Glorious moon I get, but then a king of wands. In the upper one, you kind of see that as the uh, in, uh, um, the uh, conscious, and the lower is the unconscious, uh, as we go along too. Intellectually, Queen of Swords. Wow. Um, and the Seven of Wands, intellectually, under the Queen of Swords. We go back into that. The star, various card coming up in the sexual position. This is where I read the Venus and Mars signs, and the Seven of Swords. Wow. Look at the Seven of Wands and the Seven of Swords next to each other. That's not an accident. Okay, this is Lifestyle and Core Values here. Um, we're going to get the Knight of Wands. Hmm. And the Two of Swords. Knight of Wands over the Two of Swords. Lifestyle and Core Values. Hmm. Don Quixote, I get. Off the Knight of Wands and the Two of Swords. Uh, um, they may be given to... I'll start there because it just catches my eye this night. Knight of Wands over the Two of Swords. Because I was thinking, what is that? And I was like, well... <laughs> um, that's they give themselves to like causes kind of blindly. Um, and remember, this is your person. So it's not trying to be triggery. But I'm going to say they're perfect. Um, but by blindly, I mean like with total conviction so i don't know yet whatever this person's doing um and boy they got the sal salamanders all up there in this one i really just noticed that um they're all kind of committed to it they feel like it's a calling um they might even feel sort of divinely inspired by it or something and um it's sort of like ride or die their career is ride or die you know that could be a little bit of a theme with them too, kind of a ride or die uh, feeling to them. Uh, so let's go back to the emotional aspects, uh, the King of Swords and the King of Wands. Wow. Um, and then we have the Queen of Swords over the Seven of Wands. <laughs> They're very stable. I mean, with two kings here in the emotional position, um, this, this just could be, I'll throw it out there, their parents may have been gay um, couple, and whether their parents were gay or not, they were both, um, I don't know if they both worked, but they both were very solid people, um, and so this person is really solid uh, upbringing and self-esteem, and probably, you know, these were parents that would have given them what they needed to be a strong person. So they didn't give them what they wanted when they were a little child, 
they gave them what they really needed. And I think both parents were very high functioning, maybe professionals, um, this kind of energy, gay or not, um, together, working together. Uh, there's a feeling of equality. They, they grew up in a relationship uh, with parents uh, that were uh, felt that they were equals at a very deep level, like they were equals. You know, they neither one felt that they were more than the other one, or they even made more, or something like that. They're, neither one would have felt that their job was more important than the other one. They both would have felt like both of our jobs are important. Your jobs are important. I get that, honey. And they, the other one said, no, I know your jobs are important too. Well, yes, our jobs are very important. And so, but they nevertheless were the race to um, uh, the child very well here, Pisces. And so you just get a very solid individual. It's got to be an Aquarius moon, though. Yeah. And then with the Queen of Swords, too, you're getting the air energy. And um, you might have a moon conjunct sun. I mean, they are very solid, you know. I've dealt with the moon conjunct sun a couple times in depth. Um, and they are very solid. It's hard to sway them. It's like uh, those punching bags with the sand in the bottom, and you punch them, and they clowns or something. They pop back up when you're a little kid. Um, and sort of like that. Um, that can come across as a little aloof or something. Don't let that throw you. Um, and intellectually, they're not... Uh, they are not unwilling to defend themselves, you know. So if you've got an Aquarius personality, Aquarius sun, I think you're going to have an Aries of Mercury here. Is uh, how you're going to read that. Um, and it, they have some kind of strength about them too, some fire in the Aries Mercury. There's something maybe else going on in Aries for them. Like Mercury might be backed up with Jupiter conjunct. Mercury and um, and Aries. You know, Jupiter moves pretty quick. So, uh, in other words, then they may come across. They might have a rising that's uh, you know, maybe Aries rising or something. But so they may come across kind of fiery, like a fiery person, and I think it would come across as being a little bit combative, a little bit in your face, and a, a pretty aggressive, like uh, verbally and stuff. They'd be someone to maybe tell jokes. Um, they might like talk over other people some, and just kind of be uh, very kind of aggressive in the way they want to get themselves across and get their point across, uh, and pretty forceful about it too. It's like whatever it is this person believes, they, they very uh, deeply believe it. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want to go up with them in an argument because they're the kind of person that's probably going to know what they're talking about and have thought about anything worth arguing about to them they probably considered it deeply and um with the king of swords and the queen of swords i mean it, they're just going to be very outspoken you will never have to guess what's on their mind I'll tell you that day you just ask them like what do you think about this and they're going to tell you you know um and if they say I hate this. Oh, I believe in masks, you know. And you're, well, I don't believe in masks. Well, be prepared, because now you're going to find out why they believe in masks and why you should believe in masks, too. <laughs> uh, whatever it is, right? Uh, it's like that. So, very engaging. Um, I just get the feeling with this King of Wands, like it's Jupiter. And uh, it's in there. I think mostly it's going to be with the Mercury... It's given that Mercury a lot of power and a lot of fire, too. It's adding the Sag energy and the Jupiter energy to uh, what would be a, normally a Mercury and Leo. So it's kind of like makes super Mercury and Leo. Um, it's like this person, when they talk, one the way you might notice it is when they talk just kind of naturally. It may not exactly be a bad thing. It's kind of you'll notice it about them. It's like they're, they're speaking from the stage. Or they're speaking to an audience and you might find like if they're in a group of people this would be exactly the person there's ten of you at a table and when they start talking everybody else shuts up and listens to them for a minute and they probably stay shut up until they're finished talking 
I've seen this and I often wonder, well, you, astrology would tell you, uh, but there's some kind of dominance thing comes very naturally. Queen of Swords over the Seven of Wands and sort of like, uh, it's not like, it's not really an asshole thing. It's just kind of a dominance thing. So it's like something in the tone of their voice, the speed, the, the, their persona uh, just gets people's attention and makes them want to listen to them. Whereas another person in that same group might start talking by just talk right over them. Like they don't even exist and keep going. They just get lost in that cacophony at the table. Not this person. It's like when they start talking, it's like they don't do it, but and they watch them. So that, look for that kind of thing to happen. Um, I don't know about childhood stories. They just seem to have a really solid childhood. They'll, you know, they grew up with very high functioning parents and, you know, probably, so they're probably pretty sophisticated. With this Queen of Swords implies an education. There's somebody that's uh, well educated, maybe, you know, at least like a master's degree level. Um, with them. I kind of went over how this Knight of Wands and Two of Swords is playing. This would be the exact kind of person they might kind of tell you if you go back to like college years and early years um, that they kind of shifted into some area uh, like it could be like a social work or something or uh, advocacy work uh, for some nonprofit uh, became interested in a nonprofit to save the whales and uh, became the CEO and they didn't pay a lot and really meant a lot and that drove their life in a different direction like maybe they could have made a lot more money you know doing something else um, uh, but they're doing again this is someone that's really drawn to what they believe in and that's what they're going to do don't read the bottom of the deck in this reading so you've got this Aquarius Sun and Moon person here with the Aries, uh, Mercury, probably conjunct Jupiter. We got pretty specific, so let me know. You have to look at their chart. Um, some of this, you don't, you just need the date. Um, then I'm thinking about their sexual positions here. I just wanna see also in Aries, um, even though this is the star, obviously the Aquarius card, um, I do think they have Mars in Aquarius to go with this too, uh, with the sun and the moon. Probably not like conjunct, not sure other space, but um, this star I think is Aries Venus. And that would add a lot to this, this kind of a fiery nature. It goes well, uh, if you think of Aries Venus, it really goes well with these uh, this wand energy that they have in terms of uh, they're uh, being a do-gooder, being someone who's willing to put it all on the line for cause, that kind of thing, which is very kind of Aquarian anyway, uh, energy. Um, and they have this fire behind it. So it's like air and fire, air and fire. Everywhere's air and fire. And so what happens, air and fire? Well, air just makes fire burn hotter, right? So think of that like in the bed. Um, in terms of sex, it's uh, they're kind of dominant person. I say it like this: it's a dominant, and I'm not saying like shades of gray, maybe, but I just mean they're naturally a dominant person. People don't look at them when they interact with people. They don't. It's not an effort. It's just the way they are because they're solid as a rock, and it's like um, and they ain't afraid to speak out. They, when they use their voice, they really use it, um, and they don't have to say, "Hey, you son of a bitch." It's just like it's a, "Hey, let me tell you what I think." And everybody's like, oh, what do you think? It's like somehow they want to know. It's just, it's just the vibe they have, right? Um, um, so in turn of like sex, they're going to want to like and love. They're going to want to, they're going to want to, you will be something that they value. That's how it works in Aries. So it's very honest and it's very good. So they're not going to fall in love with you unless you can give them something of value and um, make their, that's uh, uh, Venus is about values too. And that's okay, but you will. They're your soulmate. But there's also an energy that comes with it, like they like to pursue. So they may likely be the first one to come to you, first one to kiss you, maybe the first one to say, I love you, uh, even. Um, and, you know, with the Mars and Aquarius, too, um, 
I think they might, not to trigger you again, and what happened in the past is the past, they're probably going to be someone's very open-minded about sex. Um, I had this in other readings, like there's someone, they don't feel my water around naked, they're worried about it. They don't really give a shit how many lovers you had or didn't have. Um, they probably not going to be real focused on anything. Just like, let's make love, let's be in the moment, let's enjoy each other, that's what, what, it, what it's here for. Um, they might have had a lot of lovers, you know, a lot of experience in sex. I said in another reading, you know, honestly, if you're going to fill a very important position, as, which is the position of your lover, and the position of your sexual partner, let's assume an exclusive sexual partner now, for, for potentially the rest of your life, that's a very important position. So you'd want to interview people, and you wouldn't want to choose people with experience. You wouldn't want some greenhorn to take on that position, has no experience at all in love, no experience at all in sex, no, you want someone that has some experience. And with this person, <laughs> Pisces, they got experience. Another thing about that, I said before, when a person like this chooses you, they sure as hell ain't choosing you because they need you or they're in any way desperate. Or they're choosing you because you're you and they like you and they that's all it's about, which is a really neat thing, you know, um, um, here. It's like you will be the cause that they will then fight for with their Knight of Wands and Two of Swords. So thank you guys. Give me a like, thumbs up, uh, share, tell friend, tell friend, and do subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you.